We are talking today, going further in uh, laying foundations, I believe, for the season that we are going into. If you've not been here in the past four or five Sundays, please get it on the Our Father's Home channel. Talking about how to hear and obey, to understand the good works God has prepared for us, so that at the end of the day we will be wise virgins, wise builders, for that what is laying ahead, what God's going to do in the nations. Today we're talking about go with grace. Everybody say go with grace. Go with grace. What I want to say, first of all, I need to understand a revelation of what is grace all about. Grace is not first of all just, wow, I'm going to miss hell, I'm going to heaven, praise God. Yes, the biggest miracle, the biggest miracle in your life is the grace that you can be a child of God. When we sing amazing grace, how sweet the sound. He's saying amazing, amazing enablement, enablement God has given me to be a child. He's not enable as a grace just to escape the punishment, not to escape the punishment. Oh, please give me grace. Who said that to your dad or your mom or a teacher? Maybe only me. But the whole thing was just, I just want to ex escape the punishment. But many times grace is to grow up. And then grace is discipline. Because the one that he loves, the one that he accepts, the one that he treats as a true, genuine son, not a fake child, he gives discipline because he loves them. So understand the concept of grace, that you don't manipulate the word and think, yeah, I got some grace, you know, there were no punishment, there was no discipline. Discipline is coming into a pattern for a life that is significant, a life that has eternal value. So if you are without discipline, there's no grace to you. But first of all, when you became a child of God, that's the biggest miracle of your life. But then after that, when God treats you as a son, God treats you as a child. Yes, let it be so. When a father and a mother, your, your physical father and mother, maybe they were sometimes too hard on you or this or that. Make sure that you understand what was their heart, even if it came across not always right. What was their heart in what they wanted to bring across to you when a leader when a when a cell leader when somebody out there there where you work speak to you ask god god what is the discipline what is that what you want to bring to me when jesus said one thing you you lack to the rich young man he said i'm doing all those right things this 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 all of that lord i do and then god said one thing you lack Go and sell everything and then come and follow me. Oh, I can God nail him on that one thing. Come on. At least he did nine out of ten things right. Why would God nail him on the one thing that he's doing wrong? No, the word says he looked at him and he loved him. And then he said, one thing you lack. So the grace of God is that God will show you the things that you lack. The grace of God will be that he will show you where the, there is a crack in the foundation in what you are building. Because tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, that building of 20, 10, 20 stories is going to fall in and a lot of people are going to get hurt. If you build a life and in a way that is inaccurate. But God, give me your grace. Shake that what is not from you so that what is unshakable will stand to build on the unshakable tomorrow and next year and the week after that. Are you still here? So understand the concept of grace. First of all, I don't know if we have 2 Corinthians 12, 9, somewhere there. I think we must go for 2. Uh, 2 Corinthians, uh, I think that will be a new one. 2 Corinthians nine, uh, 12, verse 9 says, is where Peter, ah, oh, sorry, Paul, prayed and he said, God, this thorn in the flesh. Some people say it's my husband or it's my wife, you know. Let it be removed from me. No, in, <laughs> in the end of the day, God said, my grace is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for you. What are we talking about? Talking about God's enablement is efficient, is en enough for you. So if God's grace is enough for you, what, what is he saying? It's not first of all that the circumstances will change, but in the concept of my power will be showed, shown to you in your weakness. Because when I'm weak, 
He makes me strong. God says, in your weakness, my power will be seen. What are we talking about? Saying that when you are sinning and all doing all the wrong things and the rubbish the stuff, then God's power will be shown. No, that weakness is not talking about all the things that you just struggle with in the concept of sin, sin, sin. No, it's talking about in your weakness, my power is shown in your humility, in your dependency on me, in your realization of I cannot do this without God. The weakness of that brings you to a place of I need God. I need God. The weakness of saying, God, I come with brokenness. I come in humility. I come in a place of dependency on you. But when I come in a place of being honest and say, God, I need you, that's when his power is revealed. When you come in the place of humility, that's when his power is revealed. Hello? When you come into the place of, I need you, I, I'm dependent on you, then his, his power is revealed. That is grace that is sufficient. Grace that is enough. So that the word of the cross will be the power of God. The word of the cross is God gave everything by grace and I deserve nothing. He gave everything, I deserve nothing. But still I have boldness through the blood to enter, to enter, to enter. To the throne of grace. Why? Because of the blood. His grace is not sufficient if you believe what Christ has done on the cross is not enough. But if I say, I forgive myself, I forgive others. Why? Because you sorted out the whole thing with that other person. You sorted it out with your dad. You sorted it out with your mom, with your child, with your brother, with your friend. With... That's not why you forgive. You forgive because you respect the blood. Finish. And if you don't forgive yourself or if you don't forgive somebody else, just understand and just say to yourself, I, I, I'm not going to forgive him because I'm not going to respect the blood. I will put him in that cave. I will put him in that block. I will put him, categorize him. That is that type of person. This is the type of person. Because I give myself a throne above God's throne. That's what Satan tried to do. It didn't work. So, go with grace. You have nowhere to go except hell. Unless the grace of God can take you. Because the grace is God's enablement. God's empowerment. I say, I want to walk where he wants to walk. I will walk in humility. I will walk in dependency. Because who I am is because of him and because of him alone. Are you with me? My grace, my favor, my loving kindness and mercy is enough for you, sufficient against any danger, enables you, enable, everybody say enables you, to bear the trouble manfully. For my strength and power are made perfect, fulfilled and completed, and show themselves most effective in your weakness. Weaknesses. The strength and the power of Christ may rest, yes, may pitch a tent over and dwell upon me. Wow, man, come on. His beauty, he, his power, his strength, like a tent over you. Are you with me? But inside is what? All your rubbish. No, your weaknesses is your humility, your brokenness, your dependency. I will not be such a fool to think I can do it on my own. No. But like a tent oh, that overshadows you, the grace, the empowerment of God, the enablement of God, His strength, His power, is over you. When you walk in humility and brokenness, honesty and dependency on God. You've written down that four words, I hope, I believe. Go with grace into that what God has for you. 1 Corinthians 3, 10. According to the grace. According to the grace. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 10. According to the grace, the special endowment for my task of God bestowed on me like a skillful architect. Everybody say skillful architect. 
master builder. Skillful architect, master builder. Why? How can I be skillful, master builder? First of all, because I understand the grace. Because I understand the grace. You are still here? May God help you to understand the grace. Then you can be skillful. His absolute, excellent, excellent work that he has done through the cross. That excellent work is in you. And if God has done an excellent work through the cross, how will he not do an excellent work in and through you? Because the work that he will do in you and through you is confirmation of the excellent work that he has done on the cross. The excellence of his grace is shown through you. That's why he wants to do an excellent work in you and through you to show forth what his son has done on the cross. Father says, what my son has done on the cross is perfect, is excellent, it's significant. So when you work with the grace of God, he's showing forth the excellence, the significance of the work of the cross. Are you with me? So grace, not first of all for yourself. Stand amazed, amazed, amazed at his grace over your life. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Amazing enablement. Amazing enablement that saved a wretch like me. Amazing the enablement that I have that I could become a child of God. Why? How? Through God and through God alone. One uh, percent out of hundred is so that I'm saved from hell and going to heaven. But the other the others what is it all about are you with me bestowed on me like a skillful architect master builder skillful architect you better understand the plans you don't just go and build something like a fool on sand no masterly masterly you can build a life skillful you can be in that what you do in your business in in that what you will establish in and through you your life in your dreams in your relationships in that what you are doing But woe unto you, foolish unto you, when it be, will be your strength, your ability. You think you are skillful because the end of what is being built will be shaken. It will be a shame because it will have no eternal value. But tomorrow when you pray, tomorrow when you speak over the country, over the politics, tomorrow when you believe, let it have eternal value. Let it have its own value when you pray for those guys in Gaza, guys in, in Israel, guys in, in, in Ukraine and Russia. When you pray for them, let it have its own value that for eternity you will see the people that you prayed for. Not so that you can boast in yourself, but you will boast in the cross. And that's the only thing that you can boast about. Because it's because of God's grace on you. That as a master builder in your prayer, you masterly, in a masterly way, in an excellent way, you... Prayed in the will of God for this to be established in Gaza, this to be established in Bluefontein, this to be established in the schools. You are working in schools, all this hamors, all this rubbish that they want to put down in the throats of the kids. No, master architect, what are you building in school? Master builder, what a shame if you have a blueprint. What a shame if you have all the excellent, excellent architectural plans. And God says, you will be an architect. You are my architect. And if you understand grace, if you understand what I've done on the cross, and you look at the excellence of my son through the cross, excellence will be part of your work. Excellence will be part of your plans, your dreams, your strategies, your initiatives. It will be part of you. Amen. That's why also we're going to call in this season the Bible school our Father's excellence. When you touch the word, you touch excellence in this architectural plans. Are you with me? Next one. There we go. God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Are you with me? God is able. Everybody say, God is able. God is able. 
So if you believe that God is able, then what will happen? All grace, all His ability will come over you so that in all things, you see, in all things, in with the, all these things happening, that I can find so many excuses why things cannot happen. Because in all the things I can find excuses. I find the intimidation. That in all things, at all times, no, I'm too tired. I cannot now. I cannot focus at all times. Oh, even after the sermon is half an hour long. And in, and in all times, even when it's when I feel weak, even when I'm irritated, when I'm hurt, when I'm disappointed, when I'm negative, when I my emotions, when I'm down. At all times, his ability is available. His grace. His grace. His grace. Having all that you need. So you cannot say, I cannot do it because I don't have it. I cannot do it because there's no time. I cannot do it because of my circumstances. All that professional foolish excuses is gone if I understand grace. If I understand what Christ, what God the Father has given me in Christ Jesus, through Christ Jesus, through the cross in you that is in your face, the message of the cross, the stumbling block for your flesh. May your flesh stumble tomorrow. Let's say, may my flesh stumble so that you don't go with flesh, you go with grace. You go with the cross, you go with the message of the cross, the power of God unto salvation, but not go with the flesh because the flesh is going to destroy you. May your flesh, flesh stumble, otherwise your flesh will bring destruction in you. Okay? You are still here? That you will abound in every good work. Abound in every good work. Now the context of that good work is first of all about people with with money, people with that supposed to do good works by giving, by sowing, by all doing all these stuff. But that's in the context that he's speaking, but still the principle is for every good work that God has prepared for you in advance to do. That's the series that we are doing. The good works that you do because you respect him and he prepared for you for every day good works to do. Or the dead works that you need to repent from. Dead works, good ideas, but it's not God's idea. God's idea. I'm not just talking about stealing and killing and swearing and temper and all that rubbish. I'm talking about you have a, a sincere heart in what you do, but it's not God's will. Death is in it because it wasn't the good works that God has prepared for you. What a waste of a life. God, I prophesied. God, God, we drove out even demons. We did this. We did that in your name. God says, I don't know you. Because I don't see myself in your work. I don't see myself in the work of your hands. I don't see myself in your dreams. I don't see myself in your ideas. I don't see myself. I don't recognize my son in what you are doing. I don't know. I don't know why you did it. I don't know how you did it. I don't know for what reason. But it wasn't for me. May God help you. But it's only through grace. He will help you through grace. If I respect. But abound in every good work. What are we, if we're talking about finance, if we're talking about provision, like you are called, you, God demands you to understand what you have, your finances, that what you have. Oh, you can use God in a very disrespectful way and just, he must come, he must come, he must come. And he must do this. He must provide. God, I, God, I thank you for providing in this, but please God come and provide for this. God, and I can focus on myself. And you will stay in the desert and you will die in the desert. It's okay. You will go to heaven, but you will die in the desert. Because you know, if you use God in such a way, God is still a good God. If he said, I will provide for you. If he says, I'm the provider, he will be who he is. He will provide. So when the guys had this rotten attitude, he still he didn't take away the, the manna and the quails. Every day the miracles of God will still be over you. But you can be totally, totally out of God's will. With the destiny to die in the desert. And hopefully for your children that's with you in the desert. That they will have an understanding, the fear of God on their lives. Not to judge you for your mistakes, but to learn from your mistakes and build on your strengths. With the honor of God and the honor for parents so that they can inherit their destiny. The land that God has promised them. 
but then you better look beyond the mistakes of your mom and your dad. Since we're talking about Mother's Day, you better look beyond that. Otherwise, just die in the desert. It's a waste of a life on earth. Go to heaven, but the grace given to you was in vain. The enablement of God to have an excellent life on earth, a significant life on earth, abound in every good work. Now, the, 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 the challenge, my brother, my sister, what we don't understand is there's not a one plus one is two. So when you give, when you give your tithe, when you give your offering, that makes you that you're not a thief. Because when you give your tithe, that, is, that belongs to God. When you, when you sow, when God says, give that thousand rand, what, and you don't give it. If God says, that million rand that I have in the bank. Oh, I see that. No. That million rand. You need to give it to Johan. I cannot believe it. Wow, this cheeky sitting here in front. You know, must I give him a million rand? If God... <laughs> If God says so, what does it mean? It, God says, it doesn't belong to you. The million rand belongs to him. I'm in charge of your finances. I'm in charge of your provision. And I'm telling you, this million rand belongs to him, not to you. You don't give it, you're the thief, man. It's not just like, I didn't give. And she didn't give what God decided it belongs to that guy. Are you with me? But sometimes people give and then it doesn't work like a trick. You know, when you give your tithes and you're offering, God will open up the heavens and the windows of heaven and you will pour this blessing, what you sow, you will reap and all the... Yeah, with some guys it, it just happens. With some guys not. Don't ask me how to explain it. We don't know. But I just know God is a good God. And if you sow and you must reap in the spirit, and reap in the spirit certain, certain facets, and, and you sow this million rand, but further you are just praying. And, but God blessed you with accurate prayers that what you pray for your children and their children and their children, there's such a legacy of Clouds hanging there of God's provision psh, that will just be over their lives. And that is how my spiritual dad, how he, he sowed, he sowed in tears. He didn't reap. But in his spiritual sons, I laughed, like I said, I laughed about 215 hectares. And said, this would have been, would have been, would have been. Not this is gonna, not speak the faith, not speak the word. This would have been plan A for the church. But then still, we just got it for free. 7,000 rand for the transfer and 215. What, man? So you can sow. You can sow in tears. You can sow in prayer. You can sow with finances. A lot of stuff. So in time where they walked in the north. Because God said 40 years ago, there must be a place in the north for all this ministry. It's a big piece of land. They didn't see, but legacy, through legacy, through legacy, there's inheritance. Abram did not see. In all his faith, all his uh, obedience, in all his uh, prayers, in all, everything that he gave, he showed that the principle of so reap does not work. Because he put it in and he didn't see. He didn't see. He didn't, him and his, in his, his, I'm uh, Descendants, I said so. And him and his descendants, they didn't go and live in Canaan. Oh, but God promised me I'm the, the father of faith. He is the father of faith, according to the word of God. But his faith didn't work. Because when he died, what did he see? But it's through legacy, through legacy, through legacy. What you sow, even in the physical, so many things. Is an inheritance for the kids and their kids. So don't look at the trick of give my tie, give my offering, windows open, and I see the blessing. Chick, chick, chick. And if it doesn't work next month, I don't give because it didn't work. You cannot trick God into something. You can obey his principles. So when we're talking about abound in every good work, there's, there's the work where your finances, where your that what God has given you must work for you and work for the kingdom. So in that, it's not about 
tithes and offerings. That's obvious. That's obvious. That's because you're not a thief. But it's about when you work and you have a salary of uh, 200,000 rand a month. May, that will be awesome. 200,000 rand. That 200,000 you put before God. And you say, God, what are you saying? Tithes and offerings is off the table because that's obvious. But now for the rest. And God says, invest this 50,000. Use this 20,000 for that. Give that 2,000 to those guys in that ministry. What? You do it. And that 4,000, hello? That 4,000, use it for your family for a holiday. And, and you know when you, oh, I have competition. And when you have, and you, when you go, ah, still, when you have, go on holiday, is you and God going together. Is you and God going together? Is you and God going together on holiday? What a more a blessing because you know we're going on holiday and we took this four thousand rand. God said we must take it and we must be blessed with it, not feeling guilty. And God says, go and bless your wife with that five thousand rand to just tell her you better go and buy yourself some nice clothes and nice what 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 what. I have enough, I know, but the rest of that other clothes we're going to give away. You say I'm not looking good. No, let you know. Wives, they have their own way of thinking. Don't try to understand them, just love them. That's what God said. <laughs> okay, I can say this because my wife's not here now. Okay, what am I saying? <laughs> Come on, guys. With that, what God has given you. There's good works that you must do. So if you get that 200,000 rand, you ask God what you must do with that. You ask God what you must do there with that. Because God could say, save that, enjoy that, give that, work with that, build a new business line with this. Because then God is the one in control. He's the boss. He's the boss. And then the good works of what you have, God is taking the initiative. God is taking the and he will enable you with his grace so that you will abound in all things at all times having all that you need you will abound there will just be an overflow of good works and in the good works what is happening God is getting the glory God is getting the glory but it's by grace are you with me so by grace we received it. But what was it? Was it my good works? I was wrong. I was wrong. I trusted God. I felt, yes, I was in the spirit coming here more than 20 times, but I was inaccurate. Inaccurate. I trusted God for the seven actors of plot. And I took leaders there. I took Vepiola there. I took, so who's going to buy the seven actor plot? And we pray there and everything. But I laugh at this. Ha, oh, this would have been plan A. But praise God for his... For his grace over your life. That when you start to have the unction of the Holy Spirit, he will help you even in inaccuracies to bring it in line. So that suddenly in a shocking normal sentence, oh, please find out whose ground is this. But it was led by the Spirit. But it, I was shocked by that I didn't experience God saying to me, ask him whose ground is this. I feel the Holy Spirit say, Yes, we better grow to understand that. But if you honor the cross, honor the cross, and know that in spite of, in spite of inaccuracies, God will help you. So when I look at the farm, I see God's grace, because I was inaccurate. I was just pushing for seven hectares. Praise God, I didn't sign for that. Praise God, I didn't just push with it. Abram. By God's grace, Abram, go and slaughter your son and call it worship. We're going up the mountain to worship. Slaughter the son. But praise God for his grace that Abram was able to hear the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit says, stop, he didn't kill. Now I know that you love me and all the nations will be blessed through you. My brother, my sister, it's an awesome grace to hear God's voice. Awesome grace. And then you will see what God's going to do in you through your life. 
are you still here? But go with the good book. So many times, uh, God challenged me to sow and to sow this and to sow that, and then nothing happened. God, I will leave medical school. I will leave the medical bursary. I sow it. I sow it so that for six months, I many times don't have any food. I don't have a lot of clothes. The clothes that I got through the bursary of medical school, oh, uh, I, I work. I sow my life, and I'm involved with these guys. They steal everything in my cupboard. Ha! Ah, until two, two pence and two pieces of, no, what do you call it? Two shirts, yeah. <laughs> and bottom line. So yes, but in that place, it doesn't work. It does not work. What you sow, you will reap. I don't see reaping. I see all these struggles that I'm going through. But stand in faith, stand in faith, stand in faith. Not so that circumstances will change, but that what you sow, what you pray, what you give, how you give your life, there must be a harvest for the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. Somewhere, somehow. Are you with me? So even when I, uh, my spiritual father, Dom from Malter, he's going to minister in Mosul Bay. I was leading the worship many times. I said, but I want to lead the worship uh, there at the conference where you're going to minister. He said, there's no place in the car. I said, then I'm hiking there. I'm going to hike. Those days it was still safe. So hike, hike down there to Mosul Bay, going there. Oh, a lot of uh, interesting ways how I got there. I spoke about this in perspective, not last Sunday. Eh? Yeah, yeah, okay. Got there, led the worship, and uh, afterwards they said, oh, they're going to put me on a bus. I'm not going to hike back. They will put me on a bus. Put me on a bus. But when I come here, they're going to throw me out because I don't have money to pay the rent. But they gave me nothing there also in the ministry. It's okay. I did it for God, and, and I wanted to do it. But I got on the bus and God said to me, go and speak to the guy in the back of the bus. I said, oh, God, I'm tired with the ministry. And Nikki, Nikki and Yanni, Russ, Reynard Russ, the mother, they stayed there actually in, in Mosul Bay. Uh, she gave me some burger thing. Oh, I'm just going to eat the burger and then I'm going to speak to the guy. You know, sometimes just so a word, so a a scripture, so uh, give that encouraging word. You could bring this change. And so I opened this, this thing with a, with a burger, and there was a small piece of paper. I don't think even it was in God. And she just wrote there, when God speaks to you, do it immediately. I lost my appetite. I just close the burger. Okay, walk, walk to the back of the bus. Oh, come on, man, he's uncomfortable. Uh, can you shift up? I want to sit next to you. That's freaky. You know, sit next to him and say, uh, you and Christ, how's your life with Christ? Ooh, not so lucky. He was black belt, karate, and this, and this, and this, this type of guy. And uh, at the end of the day, he gave his life to Christ. Wonderful. And then God said, speak to the guy there. I said, probably going through the whole bus. What are we going to happen? And God said, speak to that guy. He's on his way to make a wrong decision. Okay. Hello, my name is Cornelius. I just want to tell you, tell you, God says you're on your way to make a wrong decision. And the guy couldn't believe it. He saved his fiance. He saved, but her parents are atheists. Don't believe in God. And told her she will not marry this Christian. And he's on his way to break the engagement. But I mean, who must he follow? The atheist parents or the guidance of the spirit? And God blocks him and said, no, that marriage is from me. It's from me, your father. You must get married to that lady. Yet that marriage is from me. It's not break, it, break with it because of atheist parents. Hello, ministered to him, we were tears and prayed for him, everything. He gave me something for, he said, read it when you're off the bus. <sighs> but I had to pay the 350. I'm going to go off the bus and then I'm going to be in trouble. They're going to throw me out of the place. Got out, read the paper. You've heard my need from God and I have heard your need from God. 350 rand. <laughs> 
Oh man, sometimes you will see God and you see his provision. But unfortunately, it will not just, just fall in your lap. Sometimes you must just do and go with what God has for you. Now don't go and speak to people and they say, okay, where's my money? Oh, that's rubbish, man. You do it for God. Are you with me? So I started with Creare after medical school, started with Creare, giving all these classes, uh, 90 students every week, hearing the same song of the guys that didn't practice. I thought, what the heck? My friends, they are finished, they are doctors, they are somewhere, they are, you know, they have their houses and their cars and this and this. I'm giving all these classes and I'm living, I'm 33 and I'm having the room where they rent at the church with, with a bed and a cupboard and a fridge. And two other guys in Creare came to me. He said, you're giving your life. And this is what you have. We cannot end up like you. Just having a cupboard and this. With all respect. And so they left Creare. We were finished with Creare. I said, God, I'm okay. And God said, so if you must live like that. He didn't say, don't worry, my son. I will provide for you. What you sow, you've sown a lot and you will reap. I will give you a house, I'll give you this, I'll give... No, 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 no. God said, so if you're going to live here forever, for the rest of your life, will you love me, will you serve me, and make as if this is your home? So it was me and Peter Jones and Cliff Jones and Tommy Jones, oh, three big knoller in that room. Okay, man, oh man, I've packed their bags a few times. <laughs> I said, I sit in a Christian way, food sack, hey, I think. <laughs> and uh, so, what happened? God says, make as if this is your home. So in the holidays, we're going to work in the garden. We're going to plant grass, we're going to plant, uh, get, trust God for roses, and plant it here at the church as if this is home. So we worked, even in December, they had to work. We are working, we are in the garden and have off at Christmas time and but the rest of the time work. Yeah, so that's how God encouraged me. Huh, my brother, my sister, and maybe that is what you will do then for the rest of your life and your gen the generations after you will be just blessed in certain ways because God is faithful to his word. Are you with me? But, praise God, what happened? Two, three months later, the, the, the leader said, well, are we going to give you the house on the corner that you can stay there as part of the whole setup there at the church? Okay, space for some more guys to, and we, as we started with Karari. So I took a, uh, 11 guys, nine in the house and uh, two in a caravan because there's no space in the house because there's four in the lounge and two, yeah, and blah, blah, blah. two in the caravan so that I can with a door against my window so that I can smell when they smoke the marijuana. And so that was. And then they are ashamed to come with me on a Friday because on a Friday I must feed all these vultures, you know? So on a Friday we go to pick and pay and all, there's no name, you, you guys were not, no name, white with blue. And they were ashamed because the whole trolley was just no name, you know? <laughs> And then you're packing it all out, and you see there's people looking, you know. Shoo, you know. <laughs> so that's what happened. Ah, oh, I enjoyed it. But, the, but the, the salary is going into that. But I trusted God for that house. Some of you know, you know the story. But I, I just felt in my first service I must give it through. Because you have just to say, God... It's your grace, it's your grace and your grace alone. But you do what God tells you. With the good works, even through what you have. With what I have in the salary that goes into that no-name trolley. But I enjoyed, I enjoyed life, I, I enjoyed it. You know, joy in the sacrifice, make sure about that. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples. What are we talking? With God's grace, God's enablement, God's grace will enable you to speak to others. Now, what I'm telling you, if you know God's grace, you will speak to others. Because if you know what I received, if you know there's a place like those lepers 
Oh, sorry. If you know there's a place where you can have a lot of food and you got all this food and you see the people around you, they are starving, they're going to die, their baby's going to die. But, but you know where there's food, but there's so much more than what there is for you. There's food for, for a million people and you got the food, but you walk past people dying and their kids are dying and everybody's dying, but you have your food and you will be silent. What a most utter selfish person will do that who will do that but guys only if you have a revelation that what you have is only god's grace you didn't earn it but god's grace over your life to be a child of god to know the father if you know grace you know what you will speak you will tell the people around you about God. You will tell him God loves you. You will tell him God has a plan for you. God is excited about you. God has a future for you. You are precious to Christ. You know your value. You're not cheap. How many ladies that I told on the way? Oh man, I never had a, a bad response. Remember, you're not cheap. Don't let any man mess with you. Go and tell it to the ladies. Many ladies, they will give themselves to all the guys to find the acceptance. But if they could know how precious they are, don't give yourself to the guy that has no respect for you. The guy that wants to carfufu with you before marriage is a guy that has no respect for you. He just wants to fulfill his desire like a dog. And he cannot treat you like a dog. Why will you be be treated like a dog? Why will you allow yourself to do that? Go and tell the ladies that you know. Go and tell the school kids. Go and tell the people at university. Why will you not tell them? Only if you don't know the grace that you, that you are saved by grace. You're going to heaven because of God's grace. And you will see if you know God's grace. Because if you know God's grace, you will tell the people. I'm not manipulating. I'm not condemning you. I'm just telling, giving you a wake-up call to say... Be astonished, be amazed, be thankful for the blood of Christ and what God has done for you on the cross. Are you with me? Are you still with me? Okay, next one. 1 Corinthians, we're going for a landing nearly. 1 Corinthians 15.10 But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. It was not in vain, other translations. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. When you've worked very hard, worked very hard, you think you earn something. I worked very hard. I worked even harder than all the 11 apostles that was left there. Paul said, I worked harder than all those apostles. But he said, not I. The grace of God. What is the grace of God? The enablement. God's enablement. But you know, you, it can be in vain. It was given to you in vain. It was, it was hamors. You morsed it up. How? And now you're going to hell. No, you're going to heaven. But on earth, God is giving you a specific grace. You a specific grace. You a specific grace. You a specific grace to do certain things. And you're going to morse it up. The enablement God's giving you a specific grace to do certain things this week. Some have five talents. And you better make it ten talents. Some have two talents and you better make it four. Some have one talent and you better make it two. Oh, that's unfair. Oh, there's five, I must make ten. And that guy, you only have to make one. There's a different grace given to that person. There's a grace given to go and stand on the street and to speak to people and say, God loves you, God loves you, God loves you. And on that funeral of that guy, there was such a lot of people testifying. Because of that, I left the drugs and I'm a pastor now and I have this ministry of... But he started with this guy. They just stood on the, on the corner of the, of the... They had the robot at the traffic light and just said, God loves you, God loves you, God loves you, God loves you. There was a certain grace given to him to do that. Oh, you can look down and say, this one talent that must become two. But you know what happened through that man's life. I'm talking about a true story. But the other guy with the five talents, you better be faithful. That guy with the in, enormous, with a with hundred million in the bank, hundred million dollars in the bank, you better be faithful with that. There's more temptation with that. You better be faithful with what you must do with that. Amen. Are you still here? The grace of God was not without effect. It was not in vain. You can morse it up. You can just mess it all up. 
the enablement God has given you because you're not going to use it for God. You're going to use it for yourself. You're going to use it for your provision. You're going to use it so that you have a wonderful life. You're going to thank God, but you messed up the grace of God in your life because the grace was not for you just to have a wonderful life. God would have, would have blessed you in any case because of who he is. But that grace is given for a purpose. That grace, a calling on your life is so that something in Bloemfontein must be better. Something in the nation must be better. The education system must change. Certain things will just happen. They will not be all that murderous mummies. They will not be the mummies that just murder the, the, the kids. No condemnation for whoever went through it. But you will stand and say, the most dangerous place on earth is the womb of a mother. A hundred times more, a thousand times more than Gaza. Of a mother go and throw her own child under the rubble to die. No, no, no condemnation. But we need to stand before the Lord. We need to stand before the Lord. And if the enemy has stolen from you in deception, what happened? You take back and say, whatever the enemy has stolen from me. My child is not dead. My child is in heaven. He just went before me. But I'll stand for millions of others. I'm going to stand for millions of, millions of others. Other babies. Are you with me? Oh, you just smack your name and say, wake up. By grace. Do it by grace. Okay. All right. Is that the last one? You're going for the last one. My never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. My brother, my sister, what you have is God's grace. Be thankful. Be thankful. How does it like you say, be thankful. I have a thankful. No. Be thankful for what God has given you. But with a murmuring, with a murmuring, go and die in the desert. You murmur about what you don't have. You have one destiny, go and die in the desert. You will still go to heaven, but you, will, you have messed up what God has given you. No, man. So we pray today. We pray to you today that we will go with the enablement of God. Go with grace. Because every little trillionth of a piece of what you can do is only because of who he is. Because of his excellent work on the cross. God, I pray for every man and woman in this place. That we will walk with the excellence, excellence that you've placed in our spirit. For the perfect, perfect work from the perfect, perfect lamb of God that was sacrificed on the cross. God, that we can work with the excellence that you have placed in our spirit. That we will honor you. And by honoring you, we decide to honor the excellence in our spirit. Because you are the excellency. God, and even as we will partake in communion, we want to declare your excellence. But God, even in communion, for every man and woman knowing you, I pray that we will think of all the mothers today in Mother's Day who has lost children in the, all these wars. Mothers with trauma upon trauma about kids, about babies under the rubble. Kids that are, with, went through hell in experiences. God, we pray for those mothers today that you will come. We don't know how, but Holy Spirit, that you will be the comforter in some other way where we would not know what to tell those mothers, what to say to those mothers. But Holy Spirit, you can come and do it, please. Give him a peace beyond all understanding. Please come and minister to them. And as we partake in the communion, we say, God, but for the grace, if it wasn't for your grace, we could have experienced exactly that, what those mothers experienced today. Thank you for our mothers. Thank you for your grace on our lives. So we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.